Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. This program is sponsored by Carpino Investments, a leader of community redevelopment in the North Carolina Piedmont region. On today's podcast, Jeff Garska, Economic Development Director for the City of Reedsville. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Mike. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Always good to talk to you. We're in a challenging time for everyone. Everyone's adjusting uh, so many different things to do. The pandemic uh, is affecting you how? How are you doing your job differently with economic development, Jeff? Well, you know, you know we've talked a few times uh, during this this troubling um, period that we that we face. But you know, really, what it started when this whole thing started, and back in you know March, April, uh, when everybody was just really had no idea what to do. I mean, it was just total chaos um, yeah. internally with people, you know, wrestling with how do they keep employees and how do employees feel safe and it, it was just really unsettling, and I had a lot of our industries were calling me, you know, hearing about different loan programs and grants and how do I get this money, how do I apply for this, um, how do I be an essential employer, you know, I don't want to shut down, we make products that people need, our customers still demand it, and so a lot of it for me during that time and a lot of my colleagues, and I was working very closely with our uh, state uh, economic development partnership and the county and the chamber jumped in, and we worked really closely together just to get information out to people. Mm-hmm. And that was – we just went into information brokerage mode. And I tell people that's my job anyway. I'm just an information broker. But it really, really came down to that. We had to get our people all the pertinent information that could help them what we thought might only take a month or two to c- come and go. But, you know, now we're still in the thick of it even more so. But at that time, it was like let's just get the information to everybody – get them the resources that they think they might need or can use. And just and then when we get more information, we're just going to keep passing it along. And the, the, the funny part of it really was, I guess, if you could use the word funny, you know, this, this information was obsolete within minutes. It was moving so fast. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the SBA loan programs that were available and the, the PPPs and all these different acronyms that people were throwing around, I'd send out a note to our industrial alliance group and then I'd get a note from my colleague at the state that said, you got to retract that. That's, they're out of money already. Mm-hmm. And it's 20 minutes later. And so it was just such a challenging uh, time to, to, and also to get information out that I wasn't even up to speed on. You know, I'm, I just read through it and I think I understand what it's about, but I got to get it into the hands of the people who need it. So that's really where it started. And, you know, but since then, I mean, we haven't slowed down. Um, I'm just really proud of, of Team Reedsville, the whole community, the business community, citizens, um, certainly my uh, my colleagues at City Hall and around the around the, uh, the city staff all, all together, our frontline workers. Um, we just basically said this is if, if Rise Up Reedsville is our chance, this is uh, no better time to do it than now. We've got to just keep pushing forward and serve our citizens and our businesses, and and that's what we've done. We did not. Uh, you know, turn around and throw a pity party and start feeling sorry for ourselves just because we face probably the most challenging thing that certainly my generation will ever see, uh, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> don't want to, don't want to count the chickens yet, you know. Right. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we just, we, we came together as a community and we had so many good things already in the works before COVID mm-hmm. and those things are still coming to fruition. So we couldn't just put the brakes on altogether. Well, that's the thing, too, because um, in your job, uh, recruiting and economic development and all that you're involved in, it's it's almost got to be business as usual with all the challenges. But uh, but you just got to keep moving forward all the time, haven't you? You never stop. Well, as long as the market still receives good, you know, uh, good business, um, you know, obviously the economy has gone through its ups and downs since this started back in the spring. But you know, as long as the market still exists, and I say that market in very general terms, um, you're right. I mean, we just have to keep doing what we do. And it's almost, uh, you know, no no more time critical than now to, to keep helping create jobs and keep helping to support the city's tax base and get people back to work and help our, you know, our employers grow. We've got a number of employers. Allbot is a great example. They make wet wipes. Uh, when's the last time you found some? 
and it's been a while. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they, their business has gone just over the top in that line of their business. And so you have companies out there that their business is probably doing better than ever, depending on what sector they're in. Mm-hmm. So we had that other side of the coin and we had to help them, you know, figure out how to keep their operation running safely because they were absolutely critical. So they implemented all kinds of unique, um, you know, shift change uh, procedures and check-in procedures and, you know, the break room, social distancing and distancing on the production floor when it's already crowded. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I'm really proud of the companies, our industries had to adapt quickly and, you know, do things they probably didn't even have a contingency plan for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's been interesting to see how companies have, have switched their product line and, and moved into other areas and thinking outside of the box and making it happen as well. You're exactly right. You know, there was, um, there were some resources out there early on for companies that, uh, had the ability to kind of retrofit equipment to make uh, PPE products, mm-hmm. um, face masks and shields and ventilators and those kind of things. And that was another thing I, I kind of sent out a bulletin to all of our industries and I said to any of you, you know, any of you textile companies, any of you plastics manufacturers, are you capable of making XYZ product for, you know, really essentially the federal government? And uh, we had a few that, you know, had thought about it kind of, that now nah, it's really not really not something we can do, um, but then there are others that have been able to to adapt and and you know jump into that that space. And not only was it good for their business, but you know it's good for our society to have companies that can adapt that quickly to get the safety products that our people need. Mm-hmm, sure. Is there a real success story among all of this uh, confusion and everything that maybe comes out of this so far? Uh Specifically, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I, again, I mentioned Allbod just because their their core business here in Reeseville is the wet wipes facility, and it was you know it's always done really well, um, but it is it is continuing to grow physically and through employment. We've had two; uh, they just had to postpone a third, but we've had two job fairs with them at Market Square. Mm-hmm. Again, we can do it outdoors safely, and they can bring in as many people that will show up to apply for jobs and they're hiring people on the spot. So, you know, that is a bit of a, you know, that's one, one example of a silver lining where we have a, a, a great local industry that's already doing great things. And now they're doing even better things. Yeah. And there is a uh, job fair going on today. A number of, um, a uh, number of groups partnering uh, right here in, in Rockingham County into the triad. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, people are hiring, people are looking for people to work. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, you know, that hasn't really slowed down a whole lot. I mean, um, and, you know, it's unfortunate when you see these retailers and restaurants have you know, had to let people go. And there's a lot of people that are still unemployed, but there's still jobs available in our industries and other, you know, other sectors of the, of the economy. The, the grocery store sector, I mean, they're hiring, you know, still hiring. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, you know, there are still opportunities for those people who have been displaced and it may not be the, may not be what you used to do. Uh, may not be what you'll do forever, but, um, you know, fortunately there are still opportunities out there that can get people back to work. Right. Yeah. The key word being opportunities, that's for sure. Let's, uh, let's get a little more current here with the holidays because there's some really nice things happening in Reedsville uh, as we get into the holiday season. So tell us about some of those things. Yeah. So we had our, uh, obviously we had our Halloween event. That was very successful. Everybody had a good time there. Yeah. Um, if you, if you cruise through downtown Reedsville, there are about eight or so of our uh, downtown businesses, uh, maybe more than eight have decorated their windows for a window decorating contest for Christmas holiday season. Mm-hmm. Um, those will be, those are going to be judged, I believe next week by a group of the uh, Reedsville downtown corporation board members. And, um, they were all excited to do that. And, you know, be able to display their their businesses and um, you know kind of be a part of that that sort of fun uh, fun uh, thing. And then we have our uh, uh, scavenger hunt holiday holiday scavenger hunt going on right now, where uh, folks can pick up a card and go to the different businesses that are participating and get their card punched and enter into a drawing for some pretty cool prizes. And then those who actually spend money in those stores through the month of November um, get entered into a, a whole different prize drawing for a very exciting grant prize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know the term right off. What, what's the storybook thing that's going on, too? What's the name of that? 
Yes, the uh, story story walk. Story walk. Uh, story yeah. Storybook walk. Yep. Storybook yes, so walk. So we, we we've got two books. Um, one in, one for November, one for December. One is actually a bilingual story, so it's it's written in English and in Spanish. And the uh, the pages of the books were copied and literally pasted on the windows of, of the participating merchants downtown. And so you go to each each business and you look in the window and you read the next book, page of the book. And you move on to the next one, the next one, the next one. And once you complete it, you get a, well, when you start, you get a bookmark that has all the locations mapped out. It tells you where to go. And it's, all, you know, it's promoting literacy. It's promoting, you know, outdoor exercise. It's also obviously promoting our merchants uh, and our downtown businesses and their, and what they do. Um, and at the end of it, once you've completed it, you turn in your bookmark uh, to the library and you actually get a copy of the book. So it's a really cool thing. We found it in a couple of other communities that had done it and just felt it was a great way to still be able to get people out moving around safely, of course, um, outdoors. We still have some decent weather, so that hasn't um, affected anything yet. So it's just a really neat thing for families to do together and for kids to get out and read. And, um, you know, with you know most kids not being in school physically right now, it's, you know, they still need that. You know, that's uh, individual touch. So. Sure. Yeah, that, that that's a win-win on many levels for sure, Storybook Walk. Bring us up to date on the depot because I'm hearing good things about that. That's one of those projects that's been in the work uh, pre-COVID. So that's continuing along and will uh, be a neat that thing when that all comes together next year. Yeah, so the, the depot district, um, as we've talked about, is, is really aimed to be a mixed-use um, sort of what I call an eclectic neighborhood of, you know, living quarters and, and businesses and entertainment and restaurants, public space, um, walk, you know, walkability, biking, uh, all across the railroad tracks from our downtown. So across uh, uh, Market Street uh, in that neighborhood back there, all those old industrial buildings that we hope to see redevelopment going on. And uh, you mentioned uh, Mr. Carpino is doing a project over there that will be kicking off uh, sometime after the first year. He's doing a bunch of apartments uh, with a food court and a beer garden, and we've got other businesses looking at you know, microbreweries and you know those types of things. But we're in the middle of a study right now with a, a company called Design Workshop and uh, Dancy Research, and we did a developers forum last week and brought in some um, developers and potential investors just to kind of get thoughts about challenges they've seen in other communities that they've done similar things like Revolution Mill in Greensboro, the uh, American Tobacco Complex in Durham, those types of historic redevelopments that we've seen that have been just so cool to visit. And um, we got some great feedback and we, we, we feel like we're heading in a really good direction with it. It's going to be just, it's going to be a really cool asset once it's finally built out. And it's a long-term, it's a long-term vision, but yeah. we, we think it's going to, it's going to take off really fast. Yep, but uh, what a vision that is, the the Depot District. Well, we've got just about 30 seconds left. If anyone needs to get in touch with you, Jeff, for any reason, what's the best way to do that? Sure. Um, uh, my direct office number is 336-347-2307, and my email address is the letter J, and my last name, Garsta, which is G-A-R-S-T-K-A at reedsvillenc.gov, and Please call me anytime. I appreciate your time and speaking with us. Always great to get an update. And uh, all the best to you and Team Reedsville. Happy Thanksgiving. And uh, we'll talk again a little bit closer to Christmas. Same to you, Mike. Stay safe out there. Thanks okay. for the time. You too. Uh, Jeff Garska with us on uh, this podcast. Jeff is Director of uh, Economic Development for the City of Reedsville. And again, thanks to our sponsor, and that is Carpino Investments a leader of community redevelopment in the North Carolina Piedmont region. Good things happening there with Carpino Investments in Reedsville, Eden, and in uh, other triad cities. Family-owned and operated real estate acquisition and investment company. More information on their website at carpinoinvestments.com. And, of course, you can always get lots of good information at rocketinreedsville.com.